Oh, I need my dev logs. Where are all my dev logs? I need it. Done. Have you taken your meds yet? Shut up, fuck oh, oh, oh. Okay, last episode we finally kind of finished the tree after like four episodes, but just ignore that. In this episode, I'm finally gonna bring you something more interesting. So sit back and relax, and the first thing I'm gonna do is go I'm gonna make the- I'm gonna adjust the tool sizes so they're all similar in size. So they're not comparatively so too small or too big. And also play around with the hitboxes. And okay, we have kind of working tools right here. Except they shouldn't function like they do now. So I made it so, for example, if the tree is being hit by a tool that is not an axe, it takes 10 times less damage. So as you can see, with the axe it takes down 20 damage. But with the pickaxe it only takes 2. But here I'm noticing a problem. Every time I hit the tree, the same amount of wood always drops. So by hitting the tree that is not an axe, you kind of get more wood than you should. Because, well, the tree simply hasn't died yet. But, well, I couldn't be bothered by fixing that right now. So I just continued working on the ability to destroy the stones. And for some reason, every time I hit the rock for the first time, it would just instantly die. And just kind of wobble around a little bit. Which kind of doesn't make sense. And it also drops wood for some reason. So I fixed the first hitbox, but now I'm noticing that the critical hitboxes for some reason aren't registering. Even though you clearly can't see that the pickaxe has touched it. So basically how the critical hitboxes work, I have a bunch of plates around the middle of the rock. So when you hit the rock, or an already existing critical hitbox, it randomly selects one of the plates. And then it does some calculations to, de to determine the position where the critical hitbox will go next. So when the math is done, it just puts the, the critical hitbox in that position. So for some reason when determining the position, it doesn't also take into account the rotation. So it puts the critical hitbox in a position that, that's in the world space, not around the object space. Which is the cause for why critical hitboxes spawn inside the rock, not where they should be. Around the part where you can actually hit them and see. So basically I got pissed off and started working on other things. Like quickly fixing the material amounts where it would just stay large no matter what. But after that, I had to find a solution. This cannot stay like this any longer. So the way that the hitboxes work right now, it sends the Z-frame of the hitbox that is within the tool when the animation is halfway there. Because that is the time when it looks like the, the tool has hit the thing. But this option sometimes can be pretty unreliable. Because sometimes the hitbox be in a place where it looks like you didn't even hit. Because this game right now looks like it's going to be in the first person, so you would want the hitbox to be where the mouse clicks. So that is exactly what I tried to do. I searched up the way as to how you can translate the mouse position into world space, so we can actually use it and it's pretty accurate. So after some looking, I figured out how to make it. But there's a teeny tiny problem, that you can hit the object even though you're far away, which is not very good. And after that, I went back over to the plates as to where the hitbox should even spawn. So after I had figured out that the hitbox is spawn inside of the rock, I was thinking, what if I make it so that you can see the hitboxes even though they're inside of the rock? So for that, I added the highlight object into them. To, so you can actually see the outlines of the hitbox, even though they're inside the part. But with this, I encountered a problem where the part cannot be seen through in order for the highlights to work. That is, it cannot be invisible. Otherwise, it won't highlight for some reason. So I had to think of something else. After some painful thinking, I decided to do what I didn't want to do, which is basically just putting spawn points around the rock, so it just randomly chooses out of them, and then assigns the hitbox position to one of them. And now it works pretty fine, I think. And now that we're done with the rock, Let's get on to making something more juicy. Hey you. Yes, you. I don't know how many of my viewers are subscribed, but considering you watched this far, I have to ask you a question. Do you want to be a part of something big that is in its early stages? 
I could simply ask you to subscribe just because, like the other YouTubers who just want to grow their channels. But I won't. Because I don't want this to be just about me. I want to take you on the journey alongside me and give you the ability to be a major part of the game's development by wanting to hear your thoughts about how things are being made. And to make it easier for you, I suggest that you subscribe so you know when the next episode airs. Also, you should join my Discord server because that's where the real magic happens. But now that you've subscribed and joined the Discord server, let's get back to the video. Which is modeling the wheat. I don't remember when was the last time I opened the blender. But don't worry, my skills are still there. At least, for the most part. But of course, I don't really know how to model good looking weed that isn't too performance expensive and also looks good at the same time. So I looked on Google for inspiration and I found this, which actually looks pretty good. So here's a time lapse of me making the weed. <laughs> I don't really know how long it took, but the painful part was making the oval shit that is on the sides and the top of the wheat. All the time, it, it just kept looking like a fucking wheat, not, a, not like a wheat bean, or I don't know how the hell you call it in English. But after some tries, I got it to look somewhat okay. So then I just duplicated them around, made the base, made it not straight, and then just rotated the wheat bullets around. So they're not perfectly straight also. After that, I imported them into studio. But I need a texture for them. And obviously, from experience I know that the toolbox won't be a big help with this. Because it's just total garbage there. So I had to put all of my hopes back into the AI material generator. Which honestly I didn't have much hope for too. <laughs> because it just doesn't understand what we need. But anyway, I inserted a prompt and it did spit out a wheat texture. But when I applied it, it looked absolutely terrible. <laughs> As if someone had shit over the wheat in severe amounts. But then I played around with the settings and I tried to turn down the studs per tile thing. And now it looks surprisingly okay. Like, I didn't expect that the AI would actually spit out something useful. But well, here we are. <laughs> so after finishing the wheat model, I continued on with making a custom site animation. And from my tiny experience of making the animations for the axe and the pickaxe, I actually cooked up something that looks pretty fine. And I accidentally made a very smooth animation. Like, just look at this, bro. So I added in the animations and they look pretty fire. But I wanted to see if they also appear for other players. So, so I opened the team test thingy and it doesn't look like it works. So after some minor adjustments, I got it to work. So then I went on over to actually scripting the site. So basically, I want this to be really satisfying, as you probably know by now. So what I'm thinking is, as you swing, you can actually chop down multiple wheat at the same time with one swing, depending on where it actually touches. So for that I need to fire a few remote events pretty quickly, so it actually knows where to look for. So I added that in and there's a pretty funny bug right here. Bro, this site is like a fucking job. <laughs> what is going on, man? This is illegal, bro. This cannot stay like this. Unless I make an actual jackhammer that does exactly the same thing. But anyway, I fixed that and here's the final product. Actually functioning wheat. If you ignore my suggestion in the middle of the video, now is your last chance to subscribe and join the Discord server. If you want to be an early part of something big before you click off, I promise you will not regret it. And also, if you want to know how I learned the script, check out the first link in the pinned comment. And as always, remember, you are just one game away, and I'll see you in the next one.